Hey everyone, Dave Lee here with another Blu-ray DVD collection update forward slash haul video. This is the first one for the month of March 2022, even though it might be a little bit delayed. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some new releases sent in from my good pals over at kicks.com.au and Umbrella Entertainment. There's a lot to take a look at here, so let's get into it. Okay, so once again, this is the first Blu-ray video for the month of March 2022. There will be a second extra video coming in about a week's time. Of course, this is pushing it into April, but it's still gonna be the March video. I'm a little bit behind at the moment. I do apologize to all the distributors and people who have been waiting for videos out there, the viewers. Um, I've had so much going on. I've had so many titles coming in that I've been trying to catch up on so I am a little bit delayed. I do apologize for that, but we're finally getting uh, back into this. Uh, so in that second video, the extra video, I will be covering the latest releases from Vine Vision Entertainment, uh, their latest wave of imprint titles, some great stuff in there, as well as some stuff I personally picked up myself, whether that be at the latest JB Hi-Fi sales or Amazon or some other, uh, there's some really great online sales that I picked up stuff in recently. So I'll be spotlighting all of that. But again, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at some recent releases from Umbrella Entertainment and some new uh, titles that have been sent in from kicks.com.au. So why don't we kick it all off with the titles that have been sent in from kicks.com.au. Once again, my promo code at kicks has is still valid to use. Uh, that is, of course, Dave15. You can go to kicks.com.au and use Dave15 at checkout, uh, and you get 15% off your entire order. That includes pre-orders, uh, pre it includes sales stock, in-stock stuff, whatever. Just load up a bunch of stuff into a cart and just use Dave15 and get 15% off. You can get a bunch of great stuff over there. So let's get into the new, new release titles that have been sent in from kicks. Kicks.com.au. First up, we have got Venom Let There Be Carnage. This comes as a two disc set with a 4K Blu ray and a Blu ray disc. In search of his next big story, journalist Eddie Brock lands an exclusive interview with convicted murderer and death row inmate Cletus Cassidy, who discovers Eddie's secret and becomes the host for Carnage, a menacing and terrifying symbiote. So this is my first time watching Venom 2. I'm a little bit mixed on the Venom movies. The first one I thought was not a great movie, but it was just a bunch of dumb fun. I, I enjoyed myself watching that one. The second movie, it's almost like they kind of realized well, the first movie wasn't great, but people had fun because it's just popcorn entertainment, so let's just dial all the dumb stuff up to like a thousand percent, and I have, and it has resulted in a movie that is just really not great. I didn't enjoy myself with this one very much at all, if at all, I thought it was just so over the top that it was pretty cringeworthy in, in most parts. But look, this is a good one to get into your collection if you're a collector of these Marvel films or the MCU movies. I know this is part of the Sony Spider-Verse, but there's that big overlap happening with these movies at the moment, the Sony Spider-Verse and the, and the Marvel MCU, um, because, you know, they're both in the multiverse and these movies are starting to overlap a little bit more. It's all starting to make a little bit more sense, but Sony is still somehow jumbling it all up. Anyway, that's that's a, that's a story for another time. Um, this is a this is a movie that you will want to get into collection if you're a completist, just like I am. Uh, and of course, it is a Sony release, so it's a top notch release. The video quality on this, the sound is fantastic. The sound on this is terrific as well. The HDR pass has got Dolby Vision, so it looks really nice, really crisp. Not a very colourful movie. It's very dark, so it handles the black levels very well. In some instances, I thought maybe the 4K was a little bit too dark. Uh, maybe the the Blu-ray has kind of a, a slight edge over that 4K presentation just a little bit, but when there are colors on that 4K, particularly with the Dolby Vision and the, and the um, HDR Pass, looks really great, really shimmery shiny. Again, if you're a Marvel fan, you're a superhero fan, you've got to check this one out. You've got to watch them all. You've got to collect them all. So pick it up. Next up, we have got Scream, the latest installment in the Scream franchise, essentially Scream 5. This one comes as a two-disc 4K Plus Blu-ray collection. 25 years after a streak of brutal murders shocked the quiet town of Woodsboro, California, a new killer dons the ghost face mask and begins targeting a group of teenagers to resurrect secrets from the town's deadly past. I had never watched the Scream movies until recently, but I thought the new one looked quite good. So I thought I'll go back and I'll, I'll watch all the original ones before seeing the new one. And I really quite enjoyed them all. I never realized that they were kind of like semi-comedy horrors. You know, they've got this real kind of satirical bite to them, uh, kind of like really quirky, weird kind of things. I never realized. I just thought these were like straight up slashes, which is uh, movies I don't really 
usually gravitate towards. I don't really like slashers, that kind of horror gore stuff. Uh, but these screen movies I really enjoyed, and this new one is absolutely no exception. Of course, every generation when they make a new one of these uh, screen movies, they kind of tackle what's going on in the landscape for Hollywood at the time, whether that be tropes that are overdone in movies or, you know, they tackle the way Hollywood is making movies or whatever at the time. This one, of course, we're in an era where there's so many remakes and reboots and sequels and prequels and spin-offs and, you know, cinematic universes, all this kind of junk that's going on at the moment in cinema. Scream really tackles this head on. It is what it calls itself a requel. So it's basically a remake of the original movie while being a sequel to the original movie or the original franchise. So it's a little bit of both. Again, very satirical. It turns the lens on itself and it's just so on the nose. Of course, all the original cast members who are still surviving in their roles in this franchise at this point are back here and they are all just a bundle of fun. They are, you can tell that they're just really enjoying their time in this movie here. Of course, this 4K presentation is really fantastic as well. I thought it looked great. Uh, it has a really nice HDR pass on it. Of course, dark movie again because it's a horror, so there's a lot of dark scenes and stuff. Black level management is really fantastic, but the HDR pass, particularly when you get those splatters of blood and stuff, really kind of pop off the screen. This one looks really great, and if you're a fan of the Scream franchise, uh, I would highly recommend checking this one out if you haven't already, but uh, you definitely got to get this one into your collection. I think it looks fantastic. And next up we have got Illuminations Sing 2 which comes as a 4K plus Blu-ray collector's edition loaded with some special features including two mini movies. Following on from the events of the first film, Buster Moon is happy and thriving in his new theatre. Reuniting with the old gang, they travel to the city to audition for entertainment mogul Jimmy Crystal. Unimpressed with their audition, Gunter panics and promises Jimmy former rocker Clay Calloway, and Jimmy is convinced. There is just one problem. Nobody has seen Clay Calloway in 15 years. Can the team band together to put on a show? Likewise, I hadn't watched the original Sing movie before the new one came out. Universal reached out to me, they asked me if I wanted to do some junketing for the movie, some coverage. I got to speak to some of the film's cast, which is fantastic. Shameless plug, you can check those interviews out at the link up in the top corner right there. Um, but yeah, so I thought if I'm going to cover you know, the second movie, I'm going to go back and watch the, the first one. I, to be honest, I was dreading it a little bit because this just didn't look like anything that I would enjoy at all. But surprisingly, I actually thought it was quite good. I thought the first movie was quite good. I, I thought it was just like this, going to be this over-the-top kind of jukebox musical thing with funny animals and stuff. It just didn't seem like anything that I would be that interested in. But it's a nice little movie with a great little heart and, and a good little story. The second movie, though, it absolutely doubles up on everything from the first one. The heart is bigger, the story is is grander and more enjoyable, and the character work done here is fantastic. I love the arcs that these characters go through over the course of these two movies. I think this is just such a wonderful animated film. I love the characters, the voice work in here is really great, and I really loved it. So if you've been putting off these Sing movies, I highly recommend checking them out, because they really are so much more than what they look like on the surface. I really, really enjoyed these. The 4K presentation of this one is great as well. Of course, I've, I've always said that animation doesn't always pull up much better on 4K than it does on Blu-ray. And here that is kind of the case. You don't really often get too much more of an uptick in finer detail and stuff with animation. It's just the limitations of the format. However, what you do get on a 4K uh, animated film is the colours. The HDR passes on these are great. And this is not only an over-the-top bombastic story, but it, the visual are just so shiny, so shimmery, so colourful that this absolutely bursts off your screen. I know I use that word a lot, but this one does. It looks gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. This is definitely one animated film I would highly recommend picking up on 4K. Once again, check this movie out. I really, really loved it. We've also got Clifford the Big Red Dog. This one comes in a single disc Blu-ray set. When middle schooler Emily Elizabeth meets a magical animal rescuer who gifts her a little red puppy, she never anticipated waking up to find a giant 10-foot hound in her small New York City apartment. When her single mom is away for business, Emily and her fun but impulsive Uncle Casey set out on an adventure that will keep you on the edge of your seat as our heroes take a bite out of the Big Apple. 
I, of course, grew up reading the Cliff of the Big Red Dog books. I saw the cartoons. They were always kind of on and around. It wasn't a character I ever, like, loved. It was never a favourite character, but he was just kind of there. When they announced that they were doing a live-action animation hybrid film, my interest was kind of peaked a little bit, but I didn't have, you know, high hopes. Finally getting a chance to check this one out, though, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised. This is quite a cute, charming little movie. It's not the best movie that's that's ever been made. I mean, this is a movie that's predominantly been made for kids and families and I think for that demographic it certainly works. It ticks all those boxes. Just a nice sweet little movie and uh, it's so harmless that you can't really say anything bad about it. It's got a great cast in here as well who just seem to be having you know quite a bit of fun making this film and I think that's I think that's the main thing about a movie like this. This is a really gorgeous looking Blu-ray though. This is so crisp. It's so sharp. There's no 4k for this one but I really don't think it needs it particularly because some of the animation if there was anything that I had a problem with, some of the animation, the animation's good, but I think the, the composition of the animation with the live action kind of doesn't work sometimes. And on the Blu-ray, the quality is so good that you kind of start noticing that a little bit more. I fear that if they had released this on 4K, and maybe this is why they didn't release it on 4K, but I feel like it would have been just a little bit too much. It would have just looked too fake. Sometimes animation or special effects and stuff just don't look great on 4K because of the way they've been composited or rendered or whatever. But I definitely recommend checking this one out if you're into these kind of, you know, sweet little family movies. Movies with dogs. Dogs, particularly ones where the dog doesn't die. Spoilers, sorry. We've also got The Boss Baby Family Business. This comes as a single disc Blu-ray set. The Templeton brothers have become adults and drifted away from each other, but a new boss baby with a cutting edge approach is about to bring them together again and inspire a new family business. Recently, I've watched every single one of the DreamWorks movies because I'm preparing for like a series of ranking videos like what I did with the Disney and Pixar movies over the last few years. I'm now doing it with DreamWorks. I've watched them all. Man, they were, DreamWorks did quite a few duds. This is the first time I've watched a lot of these movies. DreamWorks have done quite a few duds over the years. Boss Baby is no exception. I really, really didn't like the first one when I watched it. I thought it was just dumb, lazy, stupid, bottom, bottom, bottom of the barrel potty humour. Sometimes I like a good fart. I usually like a good fart joke. But there's just some really, really average fart jokes in here. The second movie um, I thought was maybe slightly better. It tries to expand this kind of wacky boss baby world. It tries to add a little bit more depth, a little bit more heart, and it does kind of succeed in a few of these areas. But not greatly. It is still a dumb movie. It's still pretty lazy, uninspired, with really stupid humour. But there is one decent advantage of this one. It's that you've got Jeff Goldblum in here in this really fun, wacky role who is actually quite entertaining. So I think this one's actually quite a little bit more marginally entertaining than the first one. If you're a collector of DreamWorks movies, you've got to get them all, then you've got to get this one anyway. The Blu-ray, of course, looks beautiful. Uh, there is no 4K of this available on the Australian market. Um, it looks nice. Again, I, I don't think it's something that really needs to be released in 4k or whatever but it is nice it's shiny some nice pastel kind of colors they're not the kind of colors that will burst from your screen like say sing 2 nice kind of pastel kind of you know baby colors you think of the the soft pinks and the soft blues and etc etc really nice palette and it does all pull up really nicely in uh, in blu-ray and uh you know really nice crisp image there next up we have got ridley scott's house of gucci on blu-ray when Patricia Regani, an outsider from humble beginnings, marries into the Gucci family, her unbridled ambition begins to unravel their legacy and triggers a reckless spiral of betrayal, decadence, revenge, and ultimately, murder. This was one of my most anticipated movies for a while there. It has a terrific cast, Lady Gaga, who I absolutely love, Adam Driver, Al Pacino, Jeremy Irons, even Jared Leto, who's, you know, okay from time to time. Um, and of course, directed by the great Ridley Scott. I was so pumped for this movie. Unfortunately, it just really turned out to be this kind of underwhelming Oscar bait film. Some movie that goes for like two and a half almost three hours. It's such a long movie. I felt like very little, ha so much happens, but there's just very little story here. And it kind of just like ends. It's one of those movies where you're just sitting there. There is a movie where I was sitting there looking at my watch and maybe falling asleep a little bit in, in the cinema. I thought it was okay. It was entertaining enough to an extent. The performances in here are not great. Uh, a lot of them are very hammy. 
the of course there's been a big discourse over the um accents that have been used in the movie not great at all jared leto is in this full makeup performing like this over the top character who really feels out of place in the movie etc but look i think it's a i think it's an okay movie it's one that i would like to revisit again someday to just kind of maybe reassess because there is some fun stuff in here there's some good stuff in here and interesting moments and and stuff like that and of course ridley scott directs with great flair as always this blu-ray release of of the movie of course does look really great it's very crisp it's very clear again it's not a very colorful movie it almost has like a muted palette but it's kind of soft blue kind of overcast over the movie i think really holds up really nice looks very filmic really beautiful there are a few moments where it is kind of like um you know more not explosive but kind of um you know brighter colors which do hold up really well on here as well. This one hasn't been released on 4K either. I'm not too sure why. I think this movie would actually look quite nice in 4K. Um, I think that maybe because the movie kind of had a lukewarm reception. They'd initially announced, I think, a 4K release and then it didn't happen anywhere, I believe. I know there's at least not one in the UK or the US either. Um, I think it just maybe be sometimes, you know, if a film is luke received kind of lukewarm, they kind of quietly you know, cancel that 4K release. I think that's what's happened here. It would have been nice, but luckily the Blu-ray does hold up very nice. It's a very good viewing experience. If you want to check this movie out, I, I would highly recommend the Blu-ray. And finally on Blu-ray from Kix is Last Night in Soho. This comes as a single disc Blu-ray set. An aspiring fashion designer is mysteriously able to enter the 1960s where she encounters a dazzling wannabe singer. But the glamour is not all it appears to be and the dreams of the past start to crack and splinter into something darker. All right, finally something that I can maybe gush about a little bit. I loved this movie. This is probably, it's one of my favorite movies of 2021 if not like my favorite of the year. I adored this. The two lead performers in here, Anya Taylor-Joy and Thomas and McKenzie are fantastic. They both deliver these just insanely amazing performances. I love Anya Taylor-Joy. I think she's so great. I loved uh, that, um, what was that chess show? I've forgotten the name of it, but I thought she was so fantastic. The Queen's Gambit. I thought she was great in that. Uh, this is the first time I'd ever seen, uh, I think I'd seen uh, uh, Thomas and McKenzie in a couple of smaller things, but never really paid too much attention. She was just an absolute surprise to me how incredible she was in this. I've seen her in a few things, after this as well, I've realized just how much of a terrific performer she is. You know, both ladies are wonderful in this, and I think they really hold this movie together. Of course, it is directed by the great Edgar Wright, who brings his usual flair to this movie, but dials it up. This is such a gorgeous looking film. It's noir drenched it's like a neo-noir kind of film so it's got those neo-noir feels to it that even like in the in the story it's a bit of like a kind of a horror mix with a neo-noir uh but it also has the noir stylings visually as well very kind of dark shadows but a lot of like what you would get in the more recent neo-noir stuff where it's very vibrant uh, like neon colors, lots of blues and reds and very vibrant. And of course, there's a movie that holds up really well on Blu-ray. The color management is fantastic, again, particularly with the juxtaposition with the dark black levels and, and the uh, kind of neon colors. The fine detail here is great. It's a very crisp, filmic looking transfer. Unfortunately, uh, they did not release 4K here in Australia. There's a 4K overseas, but we didn't get one on the local market, sadly. But what I understand, the 4K isn't a huge leap over the Blu-ray, which does surprise me a little bit because I thought this is a movie that would absolutely stun in 4K. Uh, but alas, I'm going to have to, uh, you know, deal with the Blu-ray for now. I might import the 4K some way down the line. But again, what I've heard is that's not a huge markup. So that's not going to be like a priority for me. Uh, so if you are after this movie and you can't be bothered importing whatever, I'd highly recommend this Blu-ray. It looks really nice and it's a movie that I think you've got to watch straight away if you haven't seen it. So, so good. We've got another brand new title here from Kix, The Card Counter, this time on DVD. Told with Trader's trademark cinematic intensity, the revenge thriller tells the story of an ex-military interrogator turned gambler, haunted by the ghosts of his past. Didn't know too much about this one going into it, but it's got Oscar Isaac, it's got William H. Macy, it's got Tiffany Haddish. I am, of course, all in on this. 
Unfortunately, it's another movie that just didn't really work for me. It's not even two hours long, but it feels so long. This movie feels like it could have been two and a half hours. It is just, it's kind of boring, it's confusing, it's uninteresting most of the way. There's a couple of decent things in here. Oscar Isaac delivers a great performance. Tiffany Haddish isn't terrific in this role, sadly. I think she is she's fantastic at comedy. I think she's a fantastic comedic talent. I love her work, but I just feel like she just didn't really have the dramatic chops for this particular role right here. Uh, of course, Willem Dafoe is incredible in his role here. So these are, you know, that was probably the highlight for me. The movie starts off really well, and I was really getting into it, and then it just kind of, it like hit a brick wall, I felt, and you've got a really slow pace. That's not a movie I, again, really did love. Unfortunately, this one didn't get a Blu-ray release in Australia. There is a Blu-ray over in the States. I only got a DVD here, but because I wanted to check this movie out, I did request a copy of this. I don't think the DVD really looked that great. Sometimes I'm actually quite surprised by how well a DVD pulls up. This one, unfortunately, was not one of them. I would recommend if you want to check this one out, if you want to add it to your collection, I would highly recommend looking at importing this through the Amazon Global Store or whatever, because I feel like a Blu-ray would be much nicer. This is a fairly nice, what I would imagine to be a really nice looking film. I can imagine it to look quite cinematic. Um, there'd be some great film grain and stuff on here. It's really kind of, um, you know, atmospheric movie and the cinematography on it's great. I think it would pull up really well on Blu-ray. Unfortunately, a lot of that doesn't kind of shine through on the DVD. Uh, so I would recommend, I probably shouldn't recommend it because, you know, I should be advertising kick stuff, but I gotta be honest here, I think a Blu-ray would be the best way to go. I don't know, maybe Random Space Media or someone like that will pick up a Blu-ray of this somewhere down the line, but for now I would unfortunately say that this one is a pass. Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. This comes as a single disc 4K release. A scientist makes a last stand on Earth with the help of a ragtag team of soldiers against an invasion of alien phantoms. Now, of course, this is based on the original Final Fantasy video games. I believe this is the first Final Fantasy movie that was released. I think there was like a, a limited anime series beforehand, but this is like, like the first movie. This is also one of the first computer generated movies ever released. Uh, it was released in 2001, so this is like six years after Toy Story, and you know, Pixar had had a couple of movies out by this stage. Shrek was coming out around the same time, but this was around the era where they're kind of trying to push a away from that cartoony CGI and try to do something that looks a little bit more realistic you know what we get nowadays but of course this is still a very primitive animated film and the animation is very primitive and i was kind of scared going into the 4k that th there's no way this is going to look good on 4k because you know going back and, and and taking a look at the original movie even if you just take a look at like a trailer on YouTube or something, you realize how dated the animation is. I mean, a lot of recent movies don't look great on 4K because you can really tell that they're CGI, they're plasticky animation, whatever. I was thinking, geez, how is this like super ancient, at like 20 year old animated movie gonna hold up on this, tra on this format? Surprisingly very well. This looks very, very good. Yes, you can tell the animation looks primitive, but it's not as bad as I was expecting. It's actually a lot more fluid and a lot more beautiful to watch. I believe this has had a new master. There was a Blu-ray out back in like 2007 or something like that, ages and ages ago. Um, I haven't seen that original Blu-ray, but from what I understand, the 4K is actually a huge markup above that Blu-ray release of the film. Of course, this has an HDR pass over the top. It looks stunning. So many great explosive colors in this one that are just absolutely just so inviting into the movie. I'm so surprised at how well this movie has held up on this format. Crisp textures, you can actually see there's so much detailing in you know the human faces and the skin tones and stuff like that you think well wow, was this really made 20 years ago uh look i would highly recommend if you are on the fence about this one because i do understand you know the concerns behind it i'd say put them all behind you and pick this one up because it looks stunning next up we have got the karate kid 3 movie 4k collection this one comes as a six disc box set, which includes all three of the Karate Kid films in both 4K and Blu-ray. Comes in this fantastic box set with each of the movies in individual Amore cases. Now, this may come as a surprise to everyone, but I've actually never watched the Karate Kid movies. I've owned the first two on Blu-ray forever, just never got around to them. Uh, so I've now got the 4K collection. I'm finally gonna watch them all. 
I, uh, I haven't had time, unfortunately, because I've just had so much stuff coming in and these have only just recently arrived and I just want to kind of get these into this video. But I have had a chance to kind of flick through them and have a look and they look absolutely stunning. Of course, Sony is behind these remasters. Sony, as I said earlier, are top of the chain when it comes to 4Ks, particularly with their remasters and stuff. Always going back to original negatives, full 4K rescans. HDR passes, etc. These, I believe, or at least the first one, has a Dolby Vision pass. This was released on 4K. The first movie was released on 4K a couple of years ago, but I believe even this one here is a new... I'm not sure if it's a new transfer, but I know this one has Dolby um, Vision, whereas the original one didn't have that Dolby Vision pass. This looks stunning. It's so filmic, beautiful film grain levels, um, and it's just so, you know, crispy and textural and, um, and, and clear. The clarity on this is insane. I think that uh, the, 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 the greatest thing about 4K is being to wa able to watch all these older, you know, movies that were shot on film. They just look so stunning. Of course, the first one probably looks the best. The second one looks really good too. The third one is kind of a little step down a little bit, but it still pulls up really, really great. And I love that Sony seems to have gone to the effort for all three movies to give it the to give each movie the proper, um, you know, restoration, the, the proper treatment that they really, really do deserve. I'm so excited to finally sit down and watch all three movies because these look great. They're just movies I just I have never got around to doing. I think it's like one of my few blind spots in, you know, cinema classics, apparently, especially when it comes to movies from the 1980s. Another fantastic box set which has just been released is the Universal Classic Monsters Icons of Horror 4K Collection. This one includes four of the earliest universal horror monster films, Dracula, Frankenstein, The Invisible Man, and The Wolfman. Much like the Karate Kid set, this comes in a nice little box set which opens up to reveal all of the films in individual Amore cases, which I think is such a beautiful touch. It's a four disc set though, this one, so it only includes the 4K discs. It doesn't include the Blu-ray discs here. It also includes a bonus 52 page original House of Horror booklet. This is the exact same booklet that has been repurposed dozens of times in the reissues of the Universal Classic Monsters uh, Blu-ray collections. So if you do own any of those Blu-ray collections, you do have this booklet or Already, but it is a nice little inclusion right here. All right, what's more to say about the Universal Monster movies? I absolutely adore these. These are some of my favorite classic movies of all time. I think Dracula, Frankenstein, the, the four, well, really the four movies that are in here are the best. They are the cream of the crop. I reckon they'll go back, they'll put a few more out. They might do like a box set every year. That's what they're doing with the Hitchcock films. They released like the Essential Hitchcock classics and now they've done a second follow-up box set. I reckon they'll do one of these every year. Of course, the major omission here is The Bride of Frankenstein, but you've also got stuff like Creature from the Black Lagoon and the Phantom of the Opera and the Mummy. I reckon these all come out in, in a box set probably next year uh, or I imagine this year for Halloween. But anyway, these are the four kind of um, seminal classics from the Universal Monsters range and it's really nice to have them here in 4K. I don't know how many times I've bought these films. I bought the original Blu-ray box set and then when they did the legacy sets with every single one of the movies, I picked all those up. Frankenstein, Dracula, you know, every every franchise got their own little box set. I picked all them up and now the 4K is here and thanks to Kix for sending it over to me. These look so good. These look amazing. I believe, I believe these are the same transfers that have been used on, on the Blu-ray over and over again. But years ago when Universal did um, do these restorations, it was p part of their, I think, 100th anniversary celebration where they went back through all of their classic movies, their most seminal films, and remastered them in 4K, some in 8K, and did some really, really gorgeous restorations. These are the same ones that we're seeing on 4K from Universal now as well. So it's the same old restorations, but now we're finally getting to see them in their full 4K glory. These look gorgeous. These are, you know, some really early black and white films. Particularly when we talk about Dracula and Frankenstein, these predate Wolfman and Invisible Man by about 10 years. Uh, they know early 1930s. And so these are very, very filmic. So much grain. They're so dark that there is just so much grain, but they look gorgeous. I think maybe these are some of the most cinematic looking films on 4K. And by that I mean it looks like you're watching a film tra a film transfer. Um, and the, the black levels on these are great. The, the contrast with the whites, they're of course black and white films. They just pull up looking so beautiful here. I love black and white cinematography in 4K, particularly these older movies. Uh, this is the best way to get these movies for sure. I've always thought the Blu-rays look great, but these are just first class. 
Doesn't matter how many times you've owned these, this is like the best you will ever get and it's worth the purchase here. So definitely pick this one up at Kix. And with that, that's the most recent releases that have been sent in from kix.com.au. Don't forget, you can head over there and use Dave15 to get 15% off your entire order, including in-stock items, sale stock, and pre-orders. Thanks again to Kix for sending over this awesome bundle of stuff. I really, really do appreciate it. At that though, we've got a whole bunch of stuff to take a look at from Umbrella Entertainment, so let's get into it. First up, we've got a new installment in the Beyond Genres line, Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth. In 1944, Spain, young Ophelia and her ailing mother arrive at the post of her mother's new husband, a sadistic army officer who is trying to quell a guerrilla uprising. While exploring an ancient maze, Ophelia encounters the fawn Pan, who tells her that she is a legendary lost princess and must complete three dangerous tasks in order to claim immortality. The collection is bundled with a whole bunch of bonus features, most of which have been ported over from the previous Blu-ray and DVD releases. So I am a latecomer to Pan's Labyrinth. I've owned this on Blu-ray for a long time. It's a movie I've, I've always wanted to get to and just for some reason never got around to. And I so wish I had watched this movie years and years ago because I would have been able to exp experience this dozens and dozens of times by now. I loved this movie so much. I would have to say this is probably one of my favourite foreign movies of all time. I adored this. I've always loved Guillermo del Toro's work, but for some reason I just never, I never dived into Pan's Labyrinth. Um, I loved it. I, th I thought the fantastical elements of this are really great. Of course, it's stunning visually, and it's a piece that really makes you think. You know, you have to watch it and focus on it and just try and, of course, it's got that ambiguous open ending where is it all fantasy or was it all real? And, uh, you know, the viewer can kind of make their own mind up. And I like to kind of go with the more like, well, this is all real because I'm just a sucker for like a, a fairy tale and these kind of whimsical stories. I love this. And uh, the transfer on this is great. It's a really beautiful Blu-ray presentation. I believe this is the exact same presentation that was on the previous Blu-ray release of this. Uh, it's got all the old bonus features that were on the original releases, all that stuff. So this is essentially... Just the original release on a new pressing with some new bells and whistles in the form of the Beyond Genres line packaging, whatever, because this is such a nice little release of this. If you're a big fan of the movie, you'll want to own uh, this particular gorgeous edition of it. We've also got a new installment in the Ozploitation Classics line, Death Cheaters. Famed Ozploitation auteur Brian Trenchard Smith follows up his Kung Pao classic, The Man from Hong Kong, with this fast and furious thrill ride. Bursting with non-stop action and death-defying stunt work, Death Cheaters tells the tale of two adrenaline junkie stunties who accept a suicide mission to infiltrate and destroy the seemingly impenetrable fortress of a notorious Filipino racketeer. Alright, we've got another Brian Trenchard Smith film entering the Ozploitation Classics line. I mean, this guy is Ozploitation you know, personified. He did some of the greatest, most iconic, um, most over-the-top exploitation classics. Of course, this one is no exception. So really fantastic stunt, stunt sequences in here. It really is, much like uh, Trenchard Smith's Stunt Rock, this is just a great showcase of fantastic stunt sequences and explosions and just crazy shit that you would never get away with in cinema today. Um, it is very much similar to Stunt Rock. I feel like the two movies work together really well as kind of a, you know, a spiritual companion piece Pieces. These were both actually included on the original Blu-ray of Man from Hong Kong, but in standard definition only. So it is really nice to get them here in Blu-ray. I believe that this would have to be a new transfer of this. I'm not sure if it was like a 4K remaster or anything like that, but it holds up really, really beautifully. Like all of these Ozploitation movies do, this is, these are movies that you would never expect to see looking this good ever but the great people at Umbrella have brought these fantastic transfers to light. This edition comes bundled with a bunch of new special features as well. I think there's like, you know, your standard um, interviews from the Not Quite Hollywood documentary. Um, you've got, I think, uh, Brian Trichard Smith did some liner notes for this. There's a little comic book that comes with it. So it's a really nice package. If you're collecting these Ozploitation titles, you're definitely gonna wanna pick this one up. If you've been a little bit more selective with what titles you're getting, I think this is one that you wanna add to your collection because it is one of those seminal kind of iconic classics definitely get on this one we've got another installment in the films of fury line fists of fury starring of course bruce lee in fists of fury a young man seeks vengeance for the death of his teacher all right so we've got another bruce lee title entering the films of fury line i believe the first like four or five 
entries in this line are actually going to be Bruce Lee movies. These have all been issued on Blu-ray before. There was like a big box set that came from Beyond Home Entertainment, I think, that had all of these movies in there. This was a number of years ago. Beyond Home Entertainment is, of course, out of the physical media game now. So Umbrella uh, has picked up a number of their older titles. And now they're reissuing these Bruce Lee movies in kind of limited editions. Um, this is, of course, the same transfer as was originally used on Beyond uh, Beyond's release. It's not fantastic. The, the the transfers on these aren't great. I don't feel like they're like proper... Re I'm not sure. Maybe they were proper rescans, but they don't look, you know, terrific. Um, I mean, the movies were, were shot on, on lower budgets too, so they don't look great to begin with. Uh, but they do kind of look a little bit kind of soft, a little bit waxy. I think they could maybe look a little bit more filmic. But, of course, it's out of Umbrella's hands. They've got the transfers that they are given. Uh, this is a fun movie. I mean, all these Bruce Lee martial arts movies are, are fun. I feel like they were pretty much exactly the same. You've got this great little story about this guy who's like avenging someone's death or whatever, and then he gets in a bunch of great little martial arts action sequences. I, of course, Bruce Lee is one of the best in the game. His films are so much fun. This is no exception. If you're collecting these ones, definitely pick up Fists of Fury because, again, it's another, like, seminal Bruce Lee classic. And we've also got another instalment in the world cinema range, The Tin Drum. In 1924, Oscar is born in the free city of Danzig. At age three, he falls down a flight of stairs and stops growing. As a result, he retains a permanent child's eye perspective on the rise of Nazism, as experienced through petite bourgeois life in his native Danzig, the free city claimed by both Germany and Poland, whose invasion in 1939 helped kickstart World War II. This is a really difficult film to talk about because this is one of cinema's most controversial films ever. It was banned in many, many places for many years. In fact, in some places, this movie has only recently become unbanned within like the last even decade or so. Um, it's a very extreme movie. There's a lot of um, uh, extreme things going on in here. Not only is this like a interesting view on World War II and Nazism from the eyes of a young child. It's very fantastical, very weird, very surreal. In fact, I believe this was um, written by uh, Jean-Claude Carrière, who was uh, someone who Louis Benoel used to use a lot for his surrealist works. Um, so you can imagine a lot of that magical kind of realism stuff is thrown into this, but there is a lot of extreme kind of visuals and stuff in this movie too. If you know anything about this movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and it's a very very difficult watch. It's in incredibly difficult to watch. And it's definitely a movie that I will never visit again. Um, but it's there. It's part of the World Cinema Collection. I mean, if this is something you want to dive into, uh, just put that little caveat, that warning at the beginning that this is a very extreme movie. This is not one that I liked, but, um, you know, if you're collecting the World Cinema line, you might want to pick this one and, and just kind of check it out for yourself. And we have a new installment in the Sunburn Screens line, playing Beatty Bow. A discontented Sydney teenager travels back in time to 1873 whilst watching an old-fashioned children's game. This new edition includes two all-new interviews, one with actor Peter Phelps and one with cinematographer Jeffrey Simpson. All right, you all know that I absolutely love the Sunburn Screens range. I love Australian films. I love being able to bulk up my collection of Australian films. This is one that I don't think I've ever really heard of before. I jumped into it. Not one that I really loved. Um, in fact, it's not one that I think I've ever really heard of as any kind of classic. You look online, it had some pretty mediocre reviews, ratings, whatever else. But it is kind of an interesting uh, uh, curio, obscurity in Australian cinema. And this line here, Sunburn Screens, is not just about getting out classic Aussie movies that we all know and love, but it's about kind of getting some of these lesser known obscure titles out on the market um, in HD for the very first time. So you do have to applaud Umbrella for putting stuff like this out there. For me, this was just a little bit weird, a little bit too quirky. I think it's kind of like a real children's kind of family film, but it's really over the top and it feels very dated. This is a late, late 80s film. Um, it just didn't really work for me. Uh, the transfer on this is really beautiful as well. There's no mention of this being a new transfer or being from a 4K scan or anything like this. So I feel like this is kind of maybe a dated master, but it still pulls up looking quite nice. Not as great as some of the other ones which have certainly been marketed as you know brand new 4k remasters or anything like that but it looks okay it looks decent and this is one that i am happy to have in in my collection and if you're collecting all these sunburn screens uh ones definitely it's one to pick up if you're a little bit more selective maybe maybe not because i, I it's not fantastic but then again i do say 
that these are the kind of films you do have to understand if you want a, you know, great sweeping understanding of Australian cinema. So it's a bit of a, you know, a touch or go one. But again, look, a really decent release from Umbrella and I appreciate any Aussie classic films that you can get out on Blu-ray. We've got another instalment in the retro sci-fi double feature range. This is volume six, which includes Colossus, The Forbin Project, and Journey to the Far Side of the Sun. In Colossus, thinking this will prevent war, the US government gives an impenetrable supercomputer total control over launching nuclear missiles. But what the computer does with the power is unimaginable to its creators. And in Journey to the Far Side of the Sun, originally titled Doppelganger, the European Space Exploration Council sends two astronauts to explore a planet similar to the Earth, but located on the opposite side of the Sun. Firstly, I will address the elephant in the room. You're probably wondering, volume six? Haven't we only had three volumes? What happened to volumes four and five? Well, what's happening is Umbrella are reissuing a couple of a bo a a double feature box sets that they did a couple of years ago the Fred, F. Se uh, the Fred F. Sears collection and the Ray Harryhausen collection, both of which were double features, they're reissuing both of these as sci-fi double feature volumes four and five. These two movies I, I didn't really love. I'm not a huge fan of 1970s science fiction. Um, there's some of it that I really like, but some of this kind of more like existential stuff, we'll be talking about like um, 2001 A Space Odyssey, you know, the 60s, 70s existential sci-fi stuff is not stuff that really works for me that much. Journey to the Far Side of the Sun is a film from uh, Jerry and Sylvia Anderson, of course, behind the Thunderbirds and a lot of great TV shows um, like that from the era. This is their first live action film and there's some really great ideas in here, but I never thought they really, it really executed that well. I think this would have been fun to see as like a little maybe series of marionettes or whatever, but look, it's a decent effort. I just think it's maybe a bit long, it's a little bit boring and some of the ideas that they try and put out they just never really quite gel. Colossus I enjoyed a little bit more. I think the story was quite a bit better. I, I really did enjoy it. It's not like a really tense kind of boiling thriller. I didn't love it but I had some really great ideas in there. It is a little bit dated now. However, now that there's, you know, we're living in this time where there's renewed tensions in the world particularly when we're talking about the launch of ballistic missiles or, you know, nuclear weaponry is becoming a kind of buzzword at the moment. This is kind of a kind of a scary thing to watch at the moment because it feels maybe a little bit too real. So maybe I was just watching this, I was like, mm, this feels a little bit too close to home for me at the moment. Uh, but look, if you're a fan of, of sci-fi, particularly you know, late 60s, early 70s sci-fi, I think you'll really love this because these are two kind of really beloved, I'd say they're cult films. Um, they're kind of like, when you talk about cult sci-fi, these are two are kind of the most iconic ones though. Journey to the Far Side of the Sun has been released on Blu-ray previously in Australia and uh, it went out of print a long time ago. I never got my hands on it, so it was really good to finally get my hands on this copy. Um, it's here now. I believe it's the same transfer that was presented on the last disc. Again, transfers here are nice. They're not new transfers or anything from Umbrella. Obviously just being given to them from the studio, but they look good. And I think, again, if you're a fan of sci-fi, you'll, uh, you'll get a kick out of this box set. We've also got another instalment in the all-star comedy capers double feature line. This is volume four, featuring two films starring Jack Lemmon, Operation Madball, and the wackiest ship in the army. In Operation Madball, in post-World War II France, US Army Hospital Private Hogan and Captain Locke try to outwit one another on issues such as wooing pretty nurses, accounting for missing medical supplies, organizing unauthorized dances, and influencing their CO. And in the wackier ship in the army, during World War II, Lieutenant Rip Crandall, who was a yachtsman before the war, takes command of the USS Echo, a sailing ship, for a secret mission in waters patrolled by Japanese warships. All right, not much to say here. We've got a couple of late 50s, early 60s war comedies starring Jack Lemmon. These are both a lot of fun. I love Jack Lemmon. I think he's fantastic. He, done, he did so many great comedy films, really great comedic and dramatic actor as well. Uh, but these are two on the more kind of wacky screwball side. I think Operation Madball was probably my favorite of the two. It's a wacky again, screwball comedy, a lot of really great laughs and a lot of fun in that one. Wankier Ship in the Army was maybe a little bit uneven for me. It starts off as a really great little comedy and then kind of veers into dramatic territory, kind of turns into like a, a serious dramatic war film where they got to like undertake this big mission and then all the comedy kind of just disappears from the movie. I felt it maybe felt a little bit flat, it was a little bit uneven, but whatever. Like Jack Lemmon's always great and his movies are always fun and if you're a fan of these old 
screwball comedies or Jack Lemmon stuff, you know, this is an absolute must for you. And it's a really great installment in this comedy capers line, which is shaping up to be one of my favourite lines from Umbrella. And we've also got a new installment in the Icons of the Silver Screen Collection. This is Volume 2, featuring two film noirs, The Big Clock and This Gun for Hire. In The Big Clock, a magazine tycoon commits a murder and pins it on an innocent man, who then tries to solve the murder himself. And in This Gun for Hire, when assassin Philip Raven shoots a blackmailer and his beautiful female companion dead, he is paid off in marked bills by his treasonous employer who is working with foreign spies. Okay, again, you all know how much I absolutely adore film noirs, and these are two of the seminal film noir classics. The Big Clock I've owned on Blu-ray for a little while. I imported the Arrow uh, Academy version of that movie a couple of years ago. This Gun for Hire was released on Blu-ray by Eureka over in the UK um, a couple of years ago as well. I never did get around to picking that one up though, so nice to finally get my hands on this one and check it out. I really enjoyed both of these movies. They're just really great film noirs, really great suspenseful, thrilling movies with terrific performances. The Big Clock has got Ray Land in there who did some really great film noirs around the time. It's one of my favourite performers in noir. And of course this Gun for Hire is one of the vehicles that starred both Alan Ladd and Veronica Lake who are one of the greatest pairings in film noir history. They did three films together. This I believe was their first one together. Alan Ladd wasn't even like first build in this movie. He's like way down on the bill list. Um, but I think they're both great. They have such great chemistry. Veronica Lake is stunning. She's got this great seductive, like when you think of femme fatales, it's either Veronica Lake or Lauren Bacall. They're like the archetypes for that kind of femme fatale role. And again, Alan Ladd is who you would picture as the gumshoe alongside Humphrey Bogart or whatever else. Both of these movies are great. If you're a fan of film noir or you want to get into film noir or more older films, I, re I think this is a really great place to start because these are easier ones. I think they're really entertaining ones as well and uh, kind of really entry-level film noir, I think. And uh, yeah, definitely get on this box. The transfers on these are great as well. I believe they are probably the same transfers used on on the, uh, on the international release of these, which look really, really nice. We've also got a Blu-ray reissue of Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. During World War II, a British colonel tries to bridge the cultural divides between a British POW and a Japanese camp commander in order to avoid bloodshed. All right, so Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence is back on Blu-ray. Umbrella put this one out on the format uh, maybe like 10 or 11 years ago. I own that original version of the Blu-ray. I watched it a long time ago, and it is such a great film. I'm not a huge David Bowie fan, but um, I'm not a fan of David Bowie at all, uh, particularly his acting stuff never been able to get into. But I think Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence is probably the best of what I have seen of his stuff. He delivers a really great performance here. And it's just a really nice, heartwarming, heart wrenching film, a really beautiful, again of course based on true events and it's definitely one you want to get into your collection and check out. Um, I, I think it's really good and, and like it's been out of print for a long time so uh, for those of you who missed out on that first printing really good chance to get to get your hands on it here. So the transfer on this of course, this I think is pretty much just a, a port of the, the original disc. It's got all the same old bonus features on there whatever else. Like this is a decent you know dramatic war kind of drama and um, I think if you're interested in these kinds of movies you'll definitely enjoy it. Again I definitely did, I love these kinds of things and um, yeah definitely check this one out. We've also got an Australian first Blu-ray release of Silent Hill. Unable to accept the fact that her daughter is dying, Rose decides to take the girl to a faith healer. On the way the pair drive through a portal in reality, leading to an eerie town called Silent Hill. The town is surrounded by a potent darkness and the human survivors fight a losing battle against it. Okay, of course, based on the video game series from the late 1990s, Silent Hill. This is the first Silent Hill movie that they made. This one came out in 2006. It's one I've never watched. I've never really been into my horror stuff until recently. So these are the kind of movies that I'm now finally getting back into. This is pretty good. It's got some nice little frights in there, some scares, some, you know, um, amb it's like great horror ambience, thrills, kinds of stuff like that. I really like it. This is like really sort of Hollywood horror. It's what you'd imagine from a studio. It's not over the top. It's not too gory or any of that kind of stuff. It is rated MA for strong horror violence but you know it is a, a little bit dated now. There is some pretty full-on stuff in here but I think it's like you know your standard Hollywood blockbuster horror and that's the kind of thing that I kind of really enjoy. That's kind of been my entry point 
to some of these more like horror thriller kind of movies. I really enjoyed this. The transfer on this one is okay. It looks fine. It doesn't, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's just kind of your stock standard kind of studio catalog release. Of course, Umbrella just take what they've been given from the studio. This was first released on Blu-ray in, uh, in the US back in 2006, the year that the movie was released. And then it was reissued with a remaster in 2019 I'm not too sure, that was put out by Shout Factory, I'm not too sure what transfer umbrella are using with this. You would hope that it's the 2019 one, which is apparently, I've had a quick look on Blu-ray.com, apparently, you know, the transfer on that one was quite a, quite a step up, but I have a feeling it might actually be the older master, the studio master, uh, but regardless, it looks okay. It's a decent movie. I, I, I don't need this movie to look any better than it does here. If you're a fan of the movie, you don't have a, have a copy of it yet, I would recommend, you know, picking this one up. And finally from Umbrella, we have a 10 disc DVD box set, Australians at War, 1940 to 2008. This DVD box set bundles up a collection of Australian war films and documentaries. These include 1982's The Highest Honour, 1984's The Last Bastion, 1940's 40,000 Horsemen, 1944's The Rats of Tobruk, 1980's Breaker Morant, 1981's Attack for Sea, 1985's A Decent Obsession, 2001's My Brother Jack, 1974's Between Wars, and 2008's Beyond Kokoda. So again, this is just a really great box set of Aussie war films. There's a lot of really great classic stuff in here. Some of these have been released on Blu-ray, like Breaker Morant and Attack Force Z, but some of these just have only been available on DVD in the past. This just basically bundles up a bunch of stuff that Umbrella already has released on DVD or Blu-ray and just puts them into a collection. Um, some of these I think might be out of print even on DVD, so it's a great way to kind of get them. Uh, you've even got stuff in here like My Brother Jack, which is this two-part mini series which was released on DVD uh, only a few months ago. It's reappearing in here um, and it's got a couple of really great, really classic, uh, classic Aussie war films like The Rats of Tobruk ch starring Chips Rafferty. There's a couple of Chips Rafferty films in here actually. Uh, but yeah, this is a really great box set if you're particularly interested in your war films, especially those coming from Australia. We've done a lot of really, really great war films over the years and I think this is a great box set and most of them look pretty good. I think they hold up pretty well on DVD. I like to see some of these on Blu-ray actually, uh, specifically the Chips Rafferty films, because I think he's so great, one of the greatest, like the earliest Aussie superstar of the screen. Uh, but this is a really great little box set, and if you're interested in these kinds of things, I would uh, highly recommend it. And as I said, there is a documentary, there's one or two documentaries in there as well, which I think is a nice little touch. And with that though, that is the end of this first Blu-ray DVD collection update for the month of March 2022. Again, I will have a second one, an extra video in about a week's time, where I'll be talking about the latest releases from ViaVision, Imprint, and a bunch of stuff that I've personally picked up myself from JB Hi-Fi or online sales, stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy the next one when that comes out. Thanks again to all of the distributors for sending in stuff to me for, to, to take a look at in this video and uh, looking forward to taking a look at the next stuff. In fact, I'm working my way through the next wave of Umbrella stuff at the moment. There's some really great titles in there. So we'll talk about those in a month's time. Thanks again for watching and again, thanks to all the distributors for sending stuff in. See you on the next one. Take it easy. Hey everyone, if you haven't yet, smash that big old subscribe button up on your screen to keep up to date with all my content and hit that like button down below. Also, don't forget to check me out on social media and please consider supporting me over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month for exclusive videos, early access content and to get your name up on the screen. Thanks again for watching.